So hi everyone and welcome to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the last video in our module on financial decision making under certainty. And in this video, we're going to go uh, a bit deeper on uh, the foundations of the consumer optimum under the Fisher model. So in the last video, we discussed case A, wherein the borrowing and the lending rate were the same. In this uh, video, we're going to discuss both case B and case C and an actual example in case C so that you have a better feel for it. And of course, as we said earlier on in the module, uh, case C is the most uh, realistic that the borrowing and the lending rates are different. Uh, but we're also going to discuss case B and let's see uh, how different it is from what we've discussed so far in case A. So again, uh, in answering the consumer optimum, uh, there could be a case wherein uh, lending is feasible, so uh, people are allowed to lend, but they cannot opt to borrow. So they can't borrow or borrowing is not allowed based on some uh, law, maybe. And uh, it, it's possible that the solution uh, involves uh, lending, right? So under this case, under case B, one possible solution would be for the consumer to lend right and in this case an ic could be tangent to the upper portion of the budget constraint or the intertemporal uh, budget constraint which is the capital market trading line so if there's lending we have the endowment point here and then we only have the upper portion which is the lending part so that's possible and of course because the consumer can lend the, the lending rate is at rs right or the savings rate and uh, that will be the equation that will characterize that and note that the consumption should be less than the initial endowment for there to be something to lend uh, a consumer cannot uh cannot opt to lend if he or she consumes more than what he or she was endowed with in the present period so there's that then the solution is on, uh, so if ever there is going to be some solution, that solution will of course lie somewhere in the intertemporal budget constraint. And it must be that the slope of the indifference curve that we discussed, we discussed before, should be equal to the slope of the lending segment of the budget constraint, which is the slope of uh, that portion of the budget constraint. So it's also possible that in case B, so remember, we had a graph, right? So we had a graph, uh, that, uh, so C1, and then this is C0. So the graph is like that. This is the lending part, right? This is the lending part. The point here is the endowment point, and it's possible that the consumer thinks, or actually, because of the optimization procedure, it, uh, it turns out that it's at E. And this is the second possible solution to case B. And it's only possible, um, the only other possible place for the IC to touch if it doesn't touch the lending segment would be at the kink itself or at the endowment point itself. So it should touch the kink, i.e. the optimal present consumption is equal to just the initial endowment and then the optimal future consumption is equal to the future endowment. The consumer neither borrows nor lends. It just opts to consume what it was given or it was endowed with in every single or in every current period it was it's in. Then the y-intercept is just this. Um, so another thing that could happen potentially is that it opts to consume nothing today, right, and saves everything for tomorrow. So that the um, the amount that he or she is endowed with in the future that's y one plus the interest earned from lending everything, right? So that will be their future uh, consumption. So that's another possibility. But again, this is quite unlikely because uh, people usually want to smoothen out their consumption over time. So for the optimum to be at the kink or at the endowment point, the optimal consumption stream must satisfy this, uh, these two conditions. The first one is that, of course, the optimal consumption points are equal to the endowments and that the MRS, okay, so this is key, okay, the MRS should be greater than one plus the, than the lending rate. So the marginal rate of substitution should be greater than one plus uh, the lending rate. Okay, so it should be greater than that. Then if these two conditions are met, then the individual's lifetime utility maximizing consumption stream is basically what he or she was endowed with in a particular period. So that we have that. 
Now, uh, le let's go to case three. Right? And case three is, again, our most realistic case wherein you're allowed to borrow and lend. And typically, uh, the borrowing rate is higher than the lending rate. So of course, you have three solutions. You could opt to lend, so that's solution one. You could opt to borrow, that's solution two. Or you could opt to uh, neither borrow or lend, even if both of them are allowed. So you can opt to do that as well. So three possible solutions, all depending on the preference, would be the consumer optimum. So let's discuss that. So solution one is just to lend. Right, so an individual could opt to lend. So the IC could be tangent to the upper portion of the budget constraint. So uh, we have a, if, if you recall our graph from before, so this is a C1, this is C0. We have a graph that looks something like here, and this is your endowment point, like the kink. It could be that the indifference curve is tangent to the lending part, which is somewhere here. And this is what this particular solution tries to ascertain. If, the, if that solution is there, if it's above the budget constraint, or if it's above the kink rather, then the corresponding segment, so this segment here is equal to this equation here, that C1 is equal to one plus the lending rate, because again, we're in the lending segment, plus Y1 minus one plus the lending rate times C0. Again, typical of uh, what we've been discussing so far. And of course, in order for this to be true, C0 must be between zero and uh, the initial endowment. Because in order for you to be able to lend, you need to have saved something. Okay, so this equality, this domain must be satisfied. So as we stated, in this case, the optimal consumption stream must satisfy two conditions. The first is that the intertemporal budget constraint is uh, on the, your, you have that lending segment there and the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the lending segment. So if that's the case, uh, then the solution is to lend. Okay, now uh, that's it for our solution to lend. But of course, we also have a case wherein uh, the consumer may opt to borrow and that's the second case. So it's kind of, it's very, very similar to our lending case, except it's, you know, the um, borrowing this time. So an IC could be tangent to the lower portion of the budget constraint. So if you recall, again, if we graph it out, so we have C1 and then C0, we have a kink, which is E here. So we have this one and then this one. Okay, note that um, this part here is your borrowing constraint, right? That's the lower part or the lower segment of the constraint below the kink. That's the borrowing segment. And uh, if, if uh, our indifference curve was tangent to that point, so say this is our indifference curve, then it's optimal for us to lend, right? And the equation that represents this line would be this equation here, which is one plus RB or the borrowing rate times Y naught plus Y1 uh, minus one plus RB times C naught. And again, the domain must follow this condition that because it should be greater than why not because you're borrowing, right? Because you want to um, you want to further consume more than you were endowed with in the present, but less than or equal to the maximum amount you can repay uh, or the few or the present value of your future wealth. Okay, so that's the domain that we restrict there. And uh, bear in mind this graph again, and uh, notice that the optimal point here lies along this uh, borrowing segment and is uh, the slope of the IC is equal to the borrowing segment. So those two conditions are your conditions wherein it's optimal for you to borrow. So that, so again, those are the intertemporal budget constraint. Uh, you're in the borrowing segment of that line and that the slope of the indifference curve is tangent to that line. So if that's the case, then the optimal solution is to borrow, right? But then, uh, so that's to borrow, but of course we have three solutions. We discussed to lend, we just discussed to borrow now. The third solution is of course to neither borrow nor lend. Okay, so uh, the only other place possible for an IC to touch the budget constraint without crossing or violating the strict convexity of preferences assumption is at the king. So if you recall our graph, okay, so let me draw it for the nth time just to make you um, uh, sort of memorize it and then uh, never forget it. Okay, so we have this one. Now, 
the uh we had a case so we said that if it lied here okay this is a solution that's best to lend then if it uh if the ic touched here okay then this was an optimal solution to borrow right but um another solution that could happen is uh, although rarely is uh if the ic is tangent to your initial endowment point here which in, in this case, the purple one is to neither, it's to neither borrow nor, uh, sorry, uh, oh no, we will uh, go back, we will go back to that link, sorry. So uh, it, it's to neither borrow nor, uh, nor lend, right? So if, if I'm at this point, the, the solution is to neither borrow nor lend. So if I, it's at this point here, then uh, the, the slope of that is uh, equal to the slope uh, at E, right? So that's uh, the solution that we have uh, there for us. Okay, so um, uh, we're, we're gonna move on. Okay, so in this case, uh, the optimal consumption is uh, when, uh, the, of course, it touches the indifference, uh, the, indifferent, the slope of the indifference curve is the same as the slope of the kink, and this one is the key here. This one is key, right? This one is key. Okay, it must be, okay, it must be that the marginal rate of substitution is in between one plus the uh, lending part, okay, which is the slope of, so in essence, this is the negative of the slope, okay, the slope of the lending part, right? And this is the negative of the slope, okay, of the borrowing part. Okay, so this is the negative of the slope of the borrowing part. So we have that there. And this is a key condition that has to be met. Okay, if ever uh, th that solution is what we deem to be correct. If this solution holds true, then the solution is to neither borrow nor lend. But if it doesn't hold, then that is not the solution that we would have. So we're going we're gonna to get to know these better through the use of an example. So here, suppose an individual lives for only two periods of time. So the individual can only live in two periods of time. And um, he expects to earn 1,000 at the beginning of this year and 2,000 at the beginning of uh, next year. Uh, sorry, 2,200. So let me just uh, revise the, this, sort of, uh, figure, uh, this sort of figure here. So that's 2,200. Okay, so this one is, uh, this is 2,200. I just mistyped at the beginning of next year. So we can identify some of the given already from here, right? So if he expects to earn 1,000 at the beginning of the year, so why not is equal to 1,000, right? And uh, at the beginning of uh, this year and at the next year, uh, beginning of next year, uh, he or she, he earns uh, 2,200. So this is 2,200. Okay, so we have that there. Then his marginal rate of substitution between present and future consumption is equal to C1 over C0. Okay, so this is an MRS value. So that's his or her MRS. Then the interest rate at which he can lend is 0 0.5, 0 0.05, and the interest rate that he can borrow is uh, 0.10. So let's just write it down. We have an RS equal to 0 0.05, and we have an RB equal to 0 0.10. Okay, so that's what we have. And we're tasked to find the optimal lifetime consumption stream. Okay, so that's what we're tasked to do. Okay, so let's um, let's do that. Okay, so let's start with that. Say uh, again, let's uh, write uh, let's write our given just to be sure, and just to recall. So y not is equal to one thousand. Y one is equal to two thousand two hundred. Then we have MRS. C0, C1 is equal to C1 over C0. Our borrowing rate is 0.10 and our lending rate is 0.5. Okay, so that's what we're given with. Okay, now, uh, as we said, there are three possible solutions. So this is KC, right? Our borrowing and you're allowed to borrow and lend. The borrowing and the lending rate are different. Okay, so there are three possible places where an IC could potentially uh, touch. So let me redraw the graph. Okay, so this is how it looks like. 
So you have three scenarios. Okay, so again, the graph looks something like this. Okay, so you have that there, you have that there. It could be scenario one would be red. It could be that the IC is touching somewhere here. That's to lend. So the optimal solution is to lend. It could be that uh, it's the purple one, which is neither, okay, neither borrow nor lend, okay, or it could be the last one, which is to uh, borrow, right? Borrow. Okay, so it could be a, one of those three cases. We are not sure exactly which of the three cases we want to find that out. Okay, so uh, let's try uh, getting a couple of things that we would know. Okay, so if we solve for MRS, okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'll solve, okay, I'll try and solve for, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, look at the, I'll look at the kink, okay, I'll look at the kink. So um, uh, let me just sort of par uh, rephrase this. So at the kink, so at the kink, uh, at the, sorry, at the kink, okay, where uh, uh, individual, or well, the, when the person, in individual, neither, okay, neither borrows nor lends, okay, we know that C naught is equal to Y naught and C1 is equal to Y1, okay? That's one of the solutions that's possible to neither borrow nor lend. And if it's that, we know that C naught is equal to Y naught and C1 is equal to Y1. Uh, if we're in that case, right? If we are in that case, MRS, okay, C naught C1 is equal, okay, is equal to, uh, since that C1 over C naught, right? C1 is just Y1, which is 2,200, all over, okay, Y0, which is 1,000. And if we solve for this, that would be 2.2. Now, if you recall, okay, so recall, for, uh, for it to be optimal, to be optimal, right, uh, under the conditions of neither borrowing nor lending, it should be that the MRS should lie between somewhere um, uh, between uh, the borrowing uh, the borrowing terms of trade and the lending terms of trade. So it this condition has to be met. So we know that this condition here, okay. So the middle one is two point two. We can actually solve for this one. So we have one plus RS. That's just equal to. RS is 0.5, so this is 1.05. So this one is 1.05. Then we also have 1 plus RB, that's 1.10, because that's 1.10, 1 uh, which should be less than 1.10. But notice, okay, notice that um, th while, this while this inequality is true, this one is not true. Therefore, neither borrowing, neither borrowing nor lending is not, okay, so is not the solution, okay? So we, uh, we take out that option. The solution is not uh, that purple, in the, that, that point where in the purple indifference curve touches the E. That's not our optimal solution. So what are our other choices? You know, what are the other things that could happen? Well, the person could opt to lend. Okay, so say uh, at lending. So at lending. So uh, at persons, this, uh, so uh, this is simplified. For a person, okay, person decides to lend. So say the person decides to lend. Then if the person decides to lend, remember, uh, there are two conditions that has to be met. Uh, first is it um, you should be should be on lending segment. Right? You should be on the lending segment. And to get that one, that's just equal to if you recall the formula, right? So this is C one is equal to one plus R S times Y naught plus Y one minus one plus R S times C naught right? Because you're on the lending segment. And uh, it should be that zero 
is less than or equal to your present consumption, less than or equal to a thousand, right? So you have that condition there. Now, if, if you substitute a couple of things here to solve for it, okay, so this is going to be 1.05, why not? Plus, uh, well, why not in this case, remember, if you recall, why not is equal to a thousand plus y1 that's equal to 2,200 minus 1.05 times c0. Then if you simplify this, you're left with 3205 minus 1.05 c0, okay? And that's your c1. For all, uh, zero less than or equal to c0, less than your y0, which is equal to 1,000. So note, this is y0. Okay, so that's the condition we have. So that's the first condition. The second condition is that uh, the MRS, okay, C0, C1, okay, should be equal to 1 plus RS. And that's basically saying that C1 over C0 should be equal to 1.05, right? So we're going to get something from here, okay? What we can do is we can solve for a value. So for example, in this case, so notice I'm gonna isolate out uh, C, uh, C naught, okay? So uh, actually to be simpler, I'm gonna isolate out, uh, okay, so C naught, okay? So it's gonna be C naught is equal to C1 over 1.05. Then what I do is I plug this back to the original constraint. So this is C naught is equal to 3205 minus 1.05, C1 over 1.05. Okay, so I can cancel this out. So C0 is equal to 3, um, uh, I'm sorry, C1 is equal to 3205 minus C1. Sorry, this is C1. So I get, um, so I get here, this is going to be equal to uh, 2, Okay, 2C1 over 3205. Then I divide both sides by 2. C1 is equal to 1602.5. So that's going to be that solution. Then I can plug in back to C0. So C0 is equal to C1 over 1.05, which is equal to 1602.5 over 1.05 which case C0 is equal to 1526.19. So those are the solutions if I opt to lend. Now, notice something here. The domain, okay, so notice the domain, okay, the domain of lending, the domain of lending is, uh, is, uh, this part, which is zero less than or equal to C naught less than 1,000, right? But your C naught here is 1526.19. Uh, and it satisfies this inequality. So this is satisfied, but it does not satisfy that inequality. Therefore, that, uh, that causes this part of lending to be not the optimal one. So that's not our optimal one. So of course, if it's neither borrowing nor lending or lending, then of course the optimal solution is to borrow. So of course we would need to try and get that answer too. So how do you get that answer? Well, it's kind of simple. Okay, so if the individual chooses to borrow, so chooses to borrow, okay, chooses to borrow, uh, well, we're going to have um, uh, a long, Okay, so we have along the budget constraint, okay, borrowing segment. Okay, so that's the first condition, constraint, borrowing segment, segment. Then uh, again, we're going to find that C1 is equal to 1 plus RB times Y0 plus Y1 minus 1 plus RB times uh, C0, right? And that's the equation. And we solved for this before, um, so this is going to be, the condition is Y0 should be less than C0, should be uh, less than or equal to y uh, Y0 plus Y1 over 1 plus R. So that's the domain that we're going to target. If we substitute, this is 1.10, that's the borrowing rate, uh, times Y0, that's 1,000, 
plus y1, that's 2,200, minus 1.10 C0. Okay? Then if we simplify it, we're going to be left with, uh, uh, we're going to just be left with 3,300 minus 1.10 C0. Our y0, our, so this is the, do, the domain of this will be y0 is 1,000. Then we have, uh, oops, we have, ooh, we have uh, C0 less than or equal to Y0 plus Y1 over 1 plus R. That's going to be 3,000. Okay, so we have that condition there. The second condition is that uh, the MRS should be equal to 1 plus RB. And uh, well, we can solve for that. C1 over C0 should be equal to 1.1. Right, and again, if we do that solution, we can solve and we can get uh, optimal value C naught star is equal to one five, and C one star is equal to one six fifty. So you can do that uh, solution on your own time, similar to what we did here in the second case, in the lending case. And if you see uh, C naught, okay, is one five, right, and notice it satisfies this inequality and it also satisfies this inequality. So it also satisfies that inequality. Therefore, uh, this part of the line, okay, so this part of the line uh, of the graph here, this is the correct one. So the optimal thing for the consumer to do is to borrow. But how much will the consumer borrow? Well, the consumer, okay, the consumer will borrow, okay, borrow, so remember S0 is equal to Y0 minus C0, and if you borrow, that savings is negative, right? Our Y0 is 1,000, our uh, consumption today is, based on this, is 1,500, therefore the person will choose to borrow 500. So the person should borrow this amount in period one, and pay the interest for that amount and then consume whatever in period two. So that's the end of our discussion on uh, decision making under certainty. I know it's been quite a long video and a long lecture, but thank you for uh, staying with me. Um, in the next few videos, we're going to discuss decision making under uncertainty, which uh, in wherein we start to incorporate the concepts of risk uh, inside of the model. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.